Uh, I would like to thank everyone who attended this convention, um, especially Denise and uh, Nancy, who I was in close contact with them for for a year now. Um, you know, it is really inspiring to be here, and it's more inspiring to see this uh, movie. Um, I just was telling uh, Nancy that uh, every time I see this movie, every time I just want to see it again and again and again. Not because I'm in this, this movie, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a major achievement. Uh, honestly, it, it was a major achievement for the labor movement. Uh, not only in the United States, but also in Iraq. We never came close together as a labor movement or a labor unions in Iraq as we came here closer. When we had the uh, joint declaration in the end after three hours of struggle um, of that discussion. But we were able to make it and we made it uh, with the help and assistance of um, U.S. Labor Against War. Thank you, U.S. Labor Against War. Um, uh, just a couple of things I just want to mention, uh, just quickly. Um, uh, one of them, it's uh, uh, I was uh, when I came to uh, San Diego um, and the U.S. U.S. Customs and uh, Immigration there in Toronto. Of course, they set up a U.S. Customs there, so. Uh, before you come here to United States, they will, you know, interrogate you and investigate everything, and they will decide from there that if you are eligible to come to United States or not. So unlike before, that we were coming to United States and they send us back. It's just like you know, they save time and money. <laughs> um, it's a good saving. I hope they they have saved this money for the benefit of the people, um, rather than going there to Iraq and you know doing all that, all, what is happening there. Um, the uh, the uh, officer asked me um, when he was searching my bag, my luggage, he was asking me, um, are you a Sunni or Shiite? And I said, uh, well, I am neither. And he said, how come? I said, well, I'm, I'm an atheist, and this is it. <laughs> And uh, he goes, um, well, atheist, you have no place in Iraq then. <laughs> well, I said, well, I know, but uh, the problem, he said, well, I didn't know there are atheists in Iraq. Well, I said, this is the lack of your culture, actually. <laughs> not, not the American culture, excuse my, my language here, but uh, you, uh, with your U.S. administration, who never believed, who never knew that there are atheists in Iraq, there are secular people in Iraq, they are progressive people in Iraq. The only thing, only thing they, they thought about is they are Sunnis and Shiites, and that's it. And that was a big problem, a major problem for us as a labor movement who lived in Iraq, who saw all kinds of oppressions and suppressions by Saddam's regime. But in the end, we found out ourselves that we are either Sunnis or Shiites. And since then, since 2003, people began to ask themselves, am I Sunni or am I Shia? We never knew that happening. We never had this before. I lived my entire life until I finished university. I served in the army for one and a half year. Uh, nobody, nobody, even the highest uh, ranking officer in the army was uh, there to ask me if I am Sunni or Shiite. But today, after the occupation, we find that it is very reality um, that you have to ask yourself, am I Shiite or Sunnis? Uh, am I Christian or Muslim? Actually, Christians are crushed. And this is another story um, in Iraq. When uh, we have in Basra city in the south, we had a population of 40,000 Christian people living there. Today, uh, we have only 2,000 people. 38,000 of those people left the country, fled their homes, fled everything, and just wanted to get a safe haven. Um, these are the Christians. Um, coming back to our story, which is the labor movement in Iraq. Um, the uh, the uh, Iraqi labor movement was formed after the uh, British invasion in 1914, and uh, the invasion was uh, 
completed in 1917, and then the, the British wanted, uh, decided to industrialize the country. Um, the labor movement began to uh, establish itself and became a labor movement as, a, as one working class, and in 1932, that was the, where the uh, Great Depression all over the world affected Iraq at the same time, and we had the major strike uh, just uh, all across the country. Um, since then, and since then, uh, because of that strike, the strike was crushed. We have never had a free trade union until this, this very moment. We never had a free trade union. Um, always we were crushed by the governments who were, um, who were coming to power one by one. Um, in 1987, as in the, in the movie uh, we saw, in 1987, the trade union, the one that belonged to the government, uh, was even that one was banned and, uh, under uh, Resolution 150 or Decree 150. And we never had a free, uh, any trade union at all to represent the workers. In 2003, uh, where we hope to, uh, we hope to have, okay, Saddam is fall, has fallen now, and uh, we have to establish our free trade unions. Um, however, the government that was brought by the occupation, the very first thing they did is to uh, issue decree number 16 to recognize and legalize uh, the one trade union, which is uh, belong to the government again, and keep the same resolutions and the, th the same laws uh, regarding the uh, workers. Uh, from the Ba'ath Party or the former regime, they just kept them in pace, and we're still working on that as workers under those laws that belong to the former regime. I mean, that means that what we had what we had before never changed today. Our federation, our workers today are suffering from those intervention that made by the government, and this, the government is unfortunately is heavily heavily supported by the U.S. occupation, led occupation uh, in Iraq. Uh, that means never change for us as workers. Um, today, what we, what we are doing here as not only our federation, but um, as uh, Denise mentioned about the Iraqi Freedom Congress, it is a mass organization. Now, what we aim to, our aims in this mass organi organization to bring together the unions, workers, uh, students, women, um, elderly, everyone, everyone we can, we bring them together to this uh, organization, the Iraq Freedom Congress. Our aim is to establish a non-religious, uh, non-ethnic government uh, where human being is, uh, is identified as a human being rather than being identified as Sunnis, Shiite, Christian, Jews, whatever, uh, Kurdish, um, uh, Arabs or Turks, whatever, all these things we said we don't want these. We want a human being being identified as a human being. We want to preserve the human rights. It is unfortunate, the human rights since 2003, it's more crushed than it was under Saddam. At least under Saddam, and I don't want anyone to misunderstand me that I'm you know, promoting for Saddam. Um, under Saddam, you will see uh, sor sort of uh, um, uh, a court or a trial, even it was imaginary trial, but at least someone goes to trial. But today, after three years of occupation, we see no trial so far. I haven't heard of any trial. Uh, people are getting killed in the street. Um, all sorts of, uh, of humiliation is practiced by either the occupation forces or by the uh, government, uh, by, by the police or by the militia who are pro-government or who are supported by the government or created by the government. Um, i give you some ex examples about the human rights abuse in, uh, in Iraq today. Um, you are, uh, you, based on your name, um, you are either sometimes you are either Sunni or Shiite. And those militia will catch you in the street and they will decide. For if, if the militia are Shiites and you are Sunni, you're gone. If the militia are Sunnis and your name is just referred to a Shiite sect, you're gone. Many people today going to the uh, Ministry of uh, Civil 
um, civil services, something like this, uh, they want to change their name to a name that doesn't refer to any other, any of those sects. If you are Ali or Hussein or uh, Omar or Uthman, these are the names that belong to certain sects. They want to change it today. Mm -hmm. Children in the street, um, and this is a very personal experience. Um, my sister-in-law, she has a child. He's 10 years old, and his name referred to a Sunni sect, while she is a Shiite. So in the street, he goes to school, and in the school, uh, he's beaten by the teacher. He's beaten by his uh, fellow students every day until she decided to move from the neighborhood and to change his name to something that doesn't refer to any one of them. Um, woman, uh, woman cannot go to the street by, her, by herself. She needs someone to escort her. Otherwise, she either be kidnapped or be harassed. Uh, actually, harassment is something like they would wish for it because harassment has become their very first level. Um, she's getting uh, maybe beaten, maybe uh, raped, uh, uh, kidnapped, all these things happening to a woman in Iraq. Um, the other part, which is the very sad part, um, it's about the, um, I would say in general, LGBT, but uh, mostly against gay people or the gay community. And I just want to mention that. Um, the LGBT, I would say L and B, T, um, is not showing in the society in Iraq. However, the gay, which is the G, it shows in the society. What we see there um, today in Iraq, see, under Saddam, um, it was just an immoral issue. It is the nationalist government. Um, they see the gay uh, issue, it's an immoral issue. However, we never heard, we never heard that someone gets killed because of that. Not by family or by the government or anyone else. But today under this Islamic regime that is supported by the uh, occupation, gays are more exposed to death. They are getting killed just, you know, openly. Nobody can say no in everywhere in the country. And the government is protecting this right. And OK, since he is gay, he must be killed. He deserves the death. And this is what is happening today in Iraq. I am receiving emails from uh, um, LGBT uh, UK. And uh, he is an Iraqi. He always sending me emails about this issue. And the issue of, of, of uh, uh, killing uh, and uh, murdering uh, gay people, it has become a major issue there. But the government doesn't want to speak about it. Um, when you talk to any uh, official in the uh, uh, US, uh, US official in Iraq, if you tell them about the situation of the gay there, and they will say, well, this is their culture. We don't go we're not going to intervene in that. They have to decide what they're going to do with it. Um, this is what, what I'm saying here, what I'm trying to get here is not about only um, the uh, gay rights or the women rights, but what I'm trying to get is that the government that has been installed, and this is, I believe, uh, firmly believe that it is installed. It is not an elected government, as they say. Um, this government that is installed, it is uh, just to serve the uh, U.S. administration ambition in Iraq rather than anything else. Um, since the 2003, um, before 2003, I was in 2002, I was in Iraq. We had electricity at least 12 hours a day in 2002. Today, we have two hours a day. After three years of occupation, now it's going to be, uh, sorry, it's going to be almost uh, three and a half. Um, after three and a half years, um, electricity, we have two hours and it's getting worse. Actually, it's got worse in the summertime because more uh, consumption of, the, uh, of electricity. Water, we have only three hours. And this three hours, you have to have a, a, a certain um, pump or, or you know, machine just to uh, great, uh, get the water. There is no water pressure, so you have to get that as quickly as possible within those three hours to fill up, fill up the tanks that you have. Um, 
piles of garbage there. Uh, there is no civil services. Um, if you are retired, you're gone because your money is not enough. The problem we have with the housing, the problem we have with the construction, we have all those issues, not to mention the corruption issue, which is a major issue in Iraq. However, the uh, U.S. Occup led occupation in Iraq doesn't want to look at it. It just turned a blind eye to those issues. After three years and a half in Iraq, the country, what we see here today, it's a country, it's a devastated country, it's a destruct, uh, destroyed country. If you wanna, if we want to bring this country up, uh, up and we wanna uh, uh, reconstruct this country, we need to um, build it from the ground up because everything is, is gone, everything is gone. Um, uh, in our uh, organization, in Iraq Freedom Congress, we try to bring those people all together. We try to uh, build a secular movement where, as I mentioned, uh, hum people are identified as a human being. We want the first, uh, we said we, the first thing that we want is to end the occupation. Without ending this occupation, the situation getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, last thing I want to say, um, uh, it is a message from the Iraqi people, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, George Bush doesn't have a good listening skills. <laughs> uh, um, like since 2002, uh, we were saying no, no to war. And since 2003, we want we said end the occupation, but the, the, the problem he doesn't understand it, he doesn't listen to it, and the message from Iraqi people is, and this is the final word that I want to say, end the occupation now. I don't want it tomorrow, but now. Thank you very much.